to revive? No, 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 not revive. Well, wow. try to keep alive. This is there's a pattern over the years. Whenever soft weather is predicted, rainy weather is predicted, the day before they gas animals. So when the rain then comes, then they they figure they can blame. And then the calf are, uh, you know, get lung problems and, and diarrhea. They can blame it on the rain, but it starts already half a day earlier before it starts up, before the bad weather starts. Now, for the record, what you were doing just now is you were putting some eggs down its throat to soothe. Well, it. I gave it, gave it a few raw eggs, but I have to catch the mother. But I don't. It looks. See here, the eyes. This is onsetting septicemia. The eyes they deep sink deep into the socket. You know, yeah. and see here, that calf is not dehydrated. See here, the skin goes right back. Yes. But that's onsetting septicemia. And what's that? Basically, blood poisoning. Watch your hand there. She's blood poisoning? Yeah. You know, because of the massive internal injuries of the animal. It's going through right into the blood. Yeah. Now, the nose is wet. It's not running like sometimes it does, eh? See here. What about its mouth? Is it white? See here, tears running down. They've dried up. This animal is in such a severe pain. And you can hear when it is breathing. Now when you were showing me the, the dead no, no. ones, their mouths, was it, is this one white as well? No, no. Is it, after a while the blood starts circulating again. Ah, oh, yes. So that doesn't look white like the dead ones, I see. Well, uh, uh, the mouth turns initially when they've been gassed, the mouth turns white. Here. You hear it breathing? Yes. It's lungs. And it's well documented the damage those, those gases do to the lungs. If the Nazis would have had this technology, they wouldn't have to put the people they wanted to kill in, 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 uh, in those concentration camps and in the gas chambers. Today's, today's Nazis don't need cons uh, don't need gas chambers anymore. And how old is this calf? A uh, week and a half old. Beautiful calf. Beautiful calf. And the uh, one that I filmed last week, it died within the day. No, 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 no. That that one, yeah. The, you no, that that, uh, that calf was older than a day. That no, no, it died within a day of me filming it. The same way. With yes, this, exactly. you know. but this when one, I filmed it, it was in trouble, Werner. Yeah, this poor fella is hanging on a little bit longer. But you can hear, see here, get the sound of it, the way it's breathing. Aye. I don't know if the camera picked it up or not, but no. that's the best we can do. As I say, this is a bunch of murderers. And when I put, the years ago, the whole trailer with 27 dead animals besides the road on a Sunday afternoon. When I did that, I thought I might get some kind of a human reaction, but I didn't get it. And the only concern of the RCMP was when they showed up in the evening, you should move that. And they never asked why there was 27 animals on the way. And wagon. I said, you should be asking, why are those animals, why did they die? But For they got enough skeletons in their closet because the same stuff was going on when two RCMP officers successively were living in that house there. Said, uh, we got about uh, shouldn't be too late. People seen enough, but this is one of many. All that said, uh, we put the YouTube's yeah, up. We put the YouTube's up in. Dave, uh, Dave. Oh, I know what I was going to say, Werner. Yeah, Dave. This is the mother. Which one? This is the mother. The one with the white face. Yeah. Oh, that's why you're braying at me. Yeah. See. Good milker, everything. Calf had the best chance. And now, look. At this time of year, 
most of the yards where they got the cattle, there's mud. Those are well bedded down right here, you know. Plus they got all the dry pastures there, you know. Yes, uh, that, that's kind of important to point out because they say his cattle aren't maintained. Werner knows every cow by name. He takes well care yeah, of them. They, Dave, Dave. See the bedding that they have? Dave, Dave, you see the way the little one is stretching his legs? Yes. It got severe pain also with its body. Uh -huh. There's massive, massive hemorrhaging of the internal organs. And they go through such an agony, those poor fellas. That, normally when they're laying down, they're all folded up. Yeah. They, they tuck their, their feet under. Yeah. See here? The way it's breathing? Yes. The lungs are destroyed on that poor little soul. Well, for the record, before I turn it off, uh, anybody cares, they can see some of Werner, Werner's pictures uh, loaded up. They're just photographs loaded up in a website. Uh, just Google his name, and it's in a site called Scrib. No, Dave. And now one statement. Shame on you, Rick Kelly. Shame on you. Learmouse from the St. John SPCA. Shame on you, Paul Melanson. And you want to deny and cover up those horrendous, those horrendous cruelties to animals and you are SPCA CA officer? Yes, for the record, Rick Kelly called us a couple of hillbillies. And I just read on May the 2nd, instead of uh, the uh, newsmen in Newfoundland. Aren't, aren't those animals just as much worse? Yeah. As, as kittens and dogs, I have nothing against the people who, who maintain the animal shelters, against the volunteers. Mm. More importantly, my heads up to those people. More but importantly, I this have, is your livelihood. But I have only disdain against the officials in the department in, in the SPCA who have been covering up those horrendous animal cruelties now for over 30 years. And they won't even come to the goddamn farm. Shame on you! And interfering when, when we wanted to find out what happened to the animal, uh, uh, Chief Inspector Melanson ordered the destruction of the specimen, so no evidence could be presented, no investiga proper investigation could be done. Okay, Werner, you got about a minute. Are you done? For the time being. Good night, cruel world. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, spectacular technologies revolutionized scientific understanding of the cell, the basic unit of life. During an interview with biochemist Michael Behe, Strobel learned how this new knowledge has shaken the foundations of Darwin's theory. In the 19th century, when Darwin was alive, uh, scientists thought that the basis of life, the cell, was some simple glob of protoplasm, like a little piece of jello or something that was not hard to explain at all. But with the hard work of science in the 20th century, we've seen that the, the cell is far from simple. It's, it's got very complicated molecular machines and things that are very resistant to Darwinian explanation. Michael Behe has devoted his career to the study of the design and operation of the cell. He has also written extensively on the biochemical challenge to evolution. Most people have no idea of how, how small and complex cells are. A typical cell from you or me, called a eukaryotic cell, is probably a tenth of the size of the head of a pin. And yet, in that single cell, there are about three billion units of DNA making out the chromosomes. And those three billion units make the molecular machines of the cell, literally machines that make the cell work. With computer animation, we can enter the cell. Here, the staggering complexity of its molecular machinery is clearly seen. It's like going into uh, an automobile factory. The factory has a large number of machines. The parts have to fit together in very specific ways to do their jobs. And if things go wrong, the cell is in big trouble. 
and just one cell is enormously complex, but humans, you and I, are made from trillions.